Let's go down that rabbit hole now. So not, not that I'm trying to say I'm telling you what to buy because I'm, I'm not going to give an official recommendation, but in general, those little four ounce bottles that you dump into an oil versus just buying something that's specifically made for a classic car, mm -hmm. I would imagine the specifically made option is going to be a better choice because you don't really know what that bottle is going to, you're adding it to something. You've got two unknowns. Yes. And that's, that's really the issue. Well, I always say it is when you take a, a, a bottle of additive and you put it in your engine oil, you are playing chemical Russian roulette with your engine. It, some guy will say, you know, I've used XYZ additive and, you know, I got five more miles to the gallon or 15 horsepower or, or whatever, right? Whatever good benefit right. they had. There will be somebody else that says, I use XYZ additive, I lost five main bearings. What's the difference? And I only had four to begin with. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't even know how that's possible, but it's wow. V8, but yeah. <laughs> you know, so the, those those are real things. And as an oil analyst, and I've looked at thousands of oil samples over years, I've seen that to be true. That sometimes that bottle of additive just works with the chemistry that was in that bottle of oil. But I've also seen where that bottle of additive works against it. I mean, I've seen one bottle of ZDP additive added to an oil create grease in 15 minutes. So I'm going to not do that then with my cars. Uh, I mean, you said it's Russian roulette, basically. With it is. I, I, yeah, I, I've seen both extremes. I've seen right. fantastic results. I've seen catastrophic results, both directions. To me, I don't want to play that game. I don't want to take that risk, especially if it's a car that I love right. and is a one of, right? You just right. can't go buy a new one right? right. <laughs> uh, to replace that one anymore. To me, it just makes more sense to use something that is made for the job. And the reality is today's oils, we're talking about that SP, that new spec that came out a couple years ago, is the best spec ever created. Because what's happened is, as I mentioned, those calcium levels going up and up, competing against the zinc. Well, when the modern OEMs started doing turbocharged direct injection engines, they found out that that high level of calcium, the sodium detergents, caused detonation in those engines. It's called low speed pre ignition, LSPI. And there's actually brand new engine tests. I was just going to say that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to screen for that. So all the new oils now all have to pass that LSPI protection test. Well, to do, pass that test, sodium, gone. Calcium, reduced back down. Now they've added some magnesium to boost it back up to have the same cleanliness that's been needed. And they've brought, brought in other chemistries now to maintain good engine cleanliness. But that reduction in detergent, while maintaining the same level as EDP, has actually improved the wear characteristics of off-the-shelf motor oil. Now you take your specialty blenders that have classic car motor oils. What they're typically doing is taking a base engine additive package and then increasing the amount of ZDP that's in there. But they're doing it within the proper blend, right? They've, they're, they're testing out and they can deal with their additive company and say, okay, you know, I'm buying, you know, your 52100, um, made that number up by the way, uh, additive package. And what type of Z, what of your ZDPs do I need to add to that in order to have this ZDP balance for classic cars? And you too can do this if you have your own centrifuge that you keep <laughs> in your garage to separate everything out. Yeah, so that, that, that's the thing. Those blenders, the marketers, they can get that information from the additive company. They say, oh, yeah, you need to use, you know, 7169 at a half percent treat rate. Um, by volume to this additive package and that will put you right there and then they can go do some testing and they can you know, verify so it, it's different when you buy the bottle of oil and it's already all in there and that's the better way to go today that's a, that's actually an interesting point too because it, oils are developing all the time and yes. we're, we're frequently getting new things they're changing the additive pack just tweaking this here and there and so even if you have had your four ounce bottle of zddp and you've been adding it in and it's been working that doesn't mean it's going to continue to work. Right, because the oil you're adding it to is constantly evolving and changing. Right. And they, they were, would have worked maybe three years ago, may not work now, because the base chemistry of that oil is different. 
the bottle is the same, but what's inside is completely different. I mean, just yesterday, we were in a lab here local uh, to you, and we were doing some testing, and just that. Mobile One Zero W40 European Formula, that label is the exact same. But about a year ago, they changed what was inside of it. Right. And you wouldn't know that unless you flipped over the back of it and looked at it and said, oh, it used to say APISN. Right. Now it says APISP. What well, used to have almost 3,000 parts per million calcium, now it has 1,200. And you, you actually did a video not too long ago. I think VR1 uh, has changed yes. its, 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 its composition mm -hmm. just recently. And it's, uh, it's improved from what I saw in the video. But that, that is. So back to that reduction in calcium, the removal of sodium. So in the old days, when we do flat tappet wear testing, and that's the thing, at Gibbs, because we built flat tappet engines and we were developing oils, I mean, we've tested probably thousands of flat tappet camshafts. And we would do these flat type of camshaft wear tests where we could take a camshaft, measure the camshaft with a, it's called an ad cold. So it can measure to a millionth of an inch accurately. So you measure the circumference of a cam lobe, all the cam lobes on the cam. You put it in the engine and you break in the camshaft. That's all you do. And then pull it back out and remeasure it. Because break in is going to have a different effect. Right. So we, we could actually develop break in oils specifically for breaking in camshafts to optimize protection for the camshaft during break-in. Then, we measure that camshaft after break-in, put it back in the engine, and then run a durability test with different oils and see how much does that camshaft wear with these different levels of chemistry. It was funny, we knew what Valvoline VR1 would do with the older high calcium sodium formulation. Right. Then all of a sudden, they changed it and they Got rid of the cal or got rid of the sodium and dropped the calcium, and all of a sudden the wear dropped. Right. On the VR1, it, right. be it became it went from being one of the not great oils to like a really good it's oil. Pretty decent. Yeah, pretty yeah. decent oil. Like, huh? How about that? Now, uh, that's, so that's I forgot what my question. That's okay. I'll edit this part out. Uh, let's see. We talked about that. We talked about that. Oh, uh, I remember. So, so with. Oils now, if you mm -hmm. go to the, the off the shelf at your AutoZone or Napa, you're going to see the, the Starburst logo, and that's going to be the most current uh, rating. That'll, that'll be an SP. Yes. But if you're looking for something that's specific for classic cars, they don't have that Starburst logo. And that's so. the key thing. So if it has that Starburst logo on there, it cannot have the higher level of ZDP that these engines need. Or, or they benefit from, right? That, that's the best way of saying it, is that if it's got the Starburst, it's limited on the amount of ZDP. It can only have 800 parts per million maximum. Uh, if it has the Starburst. If it doesn't have the Starburst, if it's a you know hot rod oil or a classic car formulation, they can have more, which is nice is that, so a lot of the oils, but if it's a 30 grade or less, then it's eligible for the Starburst. Which, and it's mandated it can't have more than 800 parts per million ZDP. Okay. If it's a 40 grade or 50 grade, that mandatory 800 parts per million is not in place. It can be higher. But the problem is, back to the same thing with the diesel oils today, just because it could have more doesn't mean it does have more. Got it. So for example, Castrol, oh, so Castrol GTX has 800 parts per million ZDP. Castrol Classic has 1,700. I see. So Shell Rotella will have about 1,200 parts per million ZDP. Delo 400 has 800. I see. So the thing is, if you look at that diesel oil, if it has the CK4 slash SM or N or SP, it's low on the, on uh, how important is it, uh, well, okay, so, so also with the rating scale, if you have a Starburst, you can pretty much go to any auto parts store, so that's got a Starburst, that'll work in a modern car. Right, absolutely. Uh, Starburst but, equals modern car. But without that, is there a way to know if you're buying a good oil versus one that just happens to have the correct specs? And See, that's the problem, is that, you know, API, all of these things are designed around modern passenger cars meeting current emissions regulations and what the EPA and OEMs want. Right. They don't care about these cars anymore. So there isn't a standard 
for classic cars. So when you go away from something that has the starburst on it, now you're at a point where you really have to trust the brand that's delivering it, to, that they're going to do what they say, right? Which is one reason why, like on my channel, what and we, we list out some stuff like, hey, Valium VR1, you can buy it. it almost everywhere right it has a higher level of ZDP they even says it's for classic cars you can use a class and you can so it's there is something you can buy everywhere the Castro classic same thing you can buy that some places right it, it has a higher level of ZDP so if you're looking for something you can just buy it off the shelf it's not a specialty formulation boutique that has to be you know ordered and shipped in those are two off-the-shelf options. They're pretty good. And you could do worse than those. So. Oh, you could do way <laughs> worse than those on the same shelf. Right. 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 Now, is there sort of a step up then? Because I, I imagine if you if you get something a bit more specialty, it, it should be performing better. Absolutely. So we've seen back to the camshaft testing. You know, when I was at, at Gibbs, I was a formulator, so bias here. Uh, the driven GP1 series. So that was, uh, it's made at the old Kindle refinery. So that's where the, the GP1 product from Driven came from. It's the old Kindle base oil with a more modern additive package. And that was been the best oil we've ever seen in terms of that wear protection. So there are a lot of options though, if you look at, so as you mentioned, GP1, mm -hmm. uh, there's the VR1, the Castro Classic. Mm -hmm. I know um, uh, Lucas, I think, has their hot they, they rod. They have hot rod, and I've seen good results from that too. You know, right. Again, there's lots of good classic car oils now that will give you that next level up. Oh, you, what, I know you just threw up the minis. And, I did ask and, you about the minis, yeah, because yeah. it's it's got the the, the, the gearbox and the and the yeah. engine share the same oil, so it's so yeah. What are, what are your thoughts on that? So with the minis, it's actually one of my favorite ones because I mentioned you know, formulating oils for Driven, our UK distributor being over there. They had a guy, uh, Swifton. Um, one of the big mini tuners over there of course they're racing these things right and same issue is that they're all classic minis and yeah we got this engine we got to protect and we got these flat tappet cams and all this but there's also a gearbox in there right and so that became a trick like how do you take care of those gears well the nice thing is when there's a straight cut gear what the type of wear that you have is actually pretty much the same as what's on the camshaft it's different than a high poly rear end where there's a 90 degree drive. Okay. Because in a straight cut gear, there's basically pure uh, rolling right. uh, contact. In a high poly, you have tons of sliding contact. So that's where you need those extreme pressure additives, the stinky sulfur stuff. You know, it's like gear oil stinks. Right. Uh, and why you never want to put gear oil in your engine, because gear oil does not typically have anywhere additives in it. I they see. have extreme pressure additives for that high sliding contact. Okay. Engine oils typically don't have extreme pressure additives in them, especially because when you have copper and other you know yellow metals in the engine, because those high sulfur extreme pressure additives typically can cause corrosion on those yellow metals. So that's, that's important with these older vehicles, is that that's why, you know, uh, a 20W50 or a straight 30, I would not go 1040, because 1040s have a lot of polymer in them. They tend to shear down. This, so Is this in a Mini or in general? Mini. Okay. Well, I, you can see call it in general, but so with a Mini, because you have that gearbox, because of all that chopping, right. when you use a straight 30 grade, there's no polymers in the oil. So it's not going to be sheared down. Okay. If you have a 1040, it will shear down mechanically, and then you're going to lose viscosity. Viscosity is the number one most important characteristic of the lubricant. So a 2050 can shear down. Now the trick is how much does it shear? And so the different additives they use to make a 2050 there's a varying amount of shear that can occur. Okay. So if they use a polymer that's very shear stable, that doesn't want to break down, 
it'll hold its viscosity better. If they use one that is less shear stable, it'll shear down more. So that's where you got to kind of look at it and see what, again, oil analysis is great because it will tell you what the engine is liking, what it doesn't like. Right. Then it lets you fine tune it and get it where it's supposed to be. But for those things, you definitely want to obviously run a gear oil. Again, I'm not a big fan of putting up other additives in there. When you have an oil that has a classic formulation that has a higher level of ZDP and those kind of things in there, it'll do a good job of protecting all of that. Now we could segue, you mentioned oil analysis a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, do you know anybody that can help us with that? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, but you know, the, the reality is, <coughs> whether you're using our service or not, just use something. Because if you're not measuring, you're guessing. Right. Real way of you know, saying it is, if you're not testing, you're trusting. Right. If someone else is telling you what, what's right, you don't know. Uh, the engine is talking. Oil analysis lets you listen and hear what it's saying. So whether you use Blackstone or Caterpillar or whatever, there's a lot of labs out there uh, that can get you data. It's just it's better to have some data to make decisions than just hearsay or gut instinct or what someone else told you on the on the internet.